Welcome back to the channel. I'm Damo. I'm Nick. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Haters Guide to the 2023 NFL Draft. So most of you will now have seen in the community tab that we have picked our teams that we're going to be supporting yeah. for the 2023 season upcoming. Look, really looking forward to it. Yeah, I can't wait. Um, for those of you who aren't aware, I've gone with the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, and I've gone with Buffalo Bills. Um, and because we think with the NFL, because there aren't a ton of games, like with the MLB, they've got 6,212 games, yeah, we, thought we we could reasonably follow, he's only 162, <laughs> so I never knew that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we did go with two teams, because we think it'll be easy for us to be able to follow both both conferences. Yeah, we've got so, a main we've got a main team each yeah, and yeah. a backup in yeah, the other from, conference. From the yeah. other conference, um, I've gone with the Detroit Lions. And Carolina Panthers. So yeah, there are teams and looking forward to see what we've we've used as content creator before, urinating tree. If you haven't checked out the channel, head over there. It's, it's a it's a funny guy. We've enjoyed the videos that we've done before, so Yeah, we have. Yeah, we this was the most requested one we had for the draft, so yeah, really looking forward to it. Definitely. Let's have a look. Enter the lair of the reigning Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs. This wasn't a coincidence whatsoever. To become a champion like the Chiefs, you must make it count in the war room. Months of scouting and assessing have led to this moment. The NFL Draft. The dreams of many men will be fulfilled with a simple announcement. Some will thrive, some will flop, but this cannot be taken away from them. Why not go over those that will forever be called first round picks? With the first pick in the 2023 oh, NFL Draft. It's your quarterback, isn't it? The Carolina... Yeah, um, I saw this already. Bryce Young from yeah. Bama. Yeah. I'm really, really looking forward to seeing what, what he brings to the Panthers. You Panthers traded this from the Bears, didn't you? Yeah. Bryce Young, quarterback, Alabama. It had been mocked for weeks. It was all but confirmed and now it's official. The Carolina Panthers have their hopeful future of the franchise. Bryce Young is the new age model of NFL quarterback. A guy who would have been scoffed at a decade ago for being undersized, but oozes upside at this level. Carolina didn't trade everything but the kitchen sink just to watch this guy fly. Wow. Bryce will get every chance to prove his talent to the league. He's dealt with immense pressure at Alabama, but will his size allow him to hold up at the next level? I'm going to say yes, but this is the NFL. The Houston Texans select C.J. Stroud, quarterback, Ohio State. The question on everyone's mind. Do the Texans pick a QB at number two? Do they go for Will Anderson and cause endless chaos? Or do they do something off the wall? That last statement may be true, but not for the predictable QB choice. It was a two-horse race between Young and Stroud for most of the year. Young was already picked, so the dynamic Stroud is selected. Houston has been looking for their next savior since Deshaun Watson left for the fool's gold of Cleveland. Stroud is a good shot of being their next guy. Welcome to the new age of Texans football. Hopefully it isn't a cock tease like the last one. The Houston Texans select Will Anderson Jr. Linebacker, Alabama. Holy shit. The Houston Texans are getting ultra aggressive and I kind of like it. Trading a wow. massive haul to the Cardinals, including next. Sorry, did they have picks two and three? Yeah, they, they traded. Obviously, yeah. Uh, yeah. They traded the, the, with Cardinals. So they get. Right, okay. So they get third pick and the 105th pick. Oh, wow. The 12th, 33rd. But then further trades could happen, and the likelihood is that none of that's going to be accurate come next year yeah. because teams are going to continuously trade. Yeah, but for, picks. for for that linebacker, they gave first first and third picks to the Cardinals in 2024. It's crazy. So they, 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 they obviously think this guy's going to be very, very good. Yeah. Next year's first rounder to pick up a potentially generational edge rusher. Nick Casario's doing everything he can to save his job. If Anderson pans out like we all suspect, the AFC South is going to be in hell. The ultimate risk for ultimate rewards. Go get him, Nick. You don't have Jack East to be preaching the Book of Revelations to you anymore. Break yourself free of his chains. <laughs> the Indianapolis Colts select Anthony Richardson, quarterback, Florida. Say hello to the highly projectable toolsy quarterback who didn't do shit in college, but jumps up draft boards because of what people wow. think he could be. I don't understand modern NFL logic. Allen and Mahomes are one in a million success stories, yet every team sees a guy like this about and him says, at the I can fix him. <laughs> For fuck's sake, even Gators fans are shitting bricks that he went this high he was that inconsistent. 
I figured they'd go for Will Levis since he got the Peyton Manning seal of approval, but AR-15 is a cult for one reason. Shane Steichen. He helped to develop Jalen Hurts into a superstar, and they're gunning for the same thing here. I'm just warning you now. He needs time to cook. If you expect this guy to be good on day one, you're going to be in for pain. Although the Colts are pretty good at giving their fans that. The Seattle Seahawks flag, <laughs> Devin Witherspoon, quarterback, oh. Illinois. Ooh, fascinating. Jalen Carter seemed like the perfect fit, but Seattle must have gotten scared off from his character and conditioning issues. They only have the recent memory of Malik McDowell scarring them from it. With Witherspoon, some say he wasn't the number one corner in the draft, but he's much better in zone coverage, which the Seahawks run a ton of. Imagine him, Tariq Woolen, and Kobe Bryant patrolling the skies of the Pacific Northwest for years. The second coming of the Legion of Boom? Seattle can. And that's why they picked him. The Arizona Cardinals select Paris Johnson Jr., Ohio State. You mean to tell me that the Cardinals are actually listening to their franchise QB? Kyler Murray had been begging them to pick a lead offensive lineman in the draft for years. But Steve Kime decided it'd be a better idea to Thanos snap his ACL in half. With people in charge who hopefully aren't fucking idiots, Kyler lobbied hard for Paris Johnson. It took another trade-up to do, but they had a successful first round. They not only got arguably the best O-lineman in the draft, they got an extra first-round pick from the Texans to play with next season. Yet they somehow lose by being forced to give up a third-round pick for tampering with Jonathan Gannon. Philly fans cheered when he left the team, and now they get another reason to celebrate. Jesus. The Las Vegas Raiders select... Tyree Wilson, defensive end, Texas Tech. This pick goes to show you how utterly terrible Chandler Jones was last season. His only highlight was Jacoby Myers throwing him a pass and force pushing the soul out of Mac Jones' body. Otherwise, you'd have a better chance of finding Waldo on the football field. Tyree Wilson is the hopeful fix to this calamity. If he pans out, him and Max Crosby in that division, oh baby, that'll be a deadly mix. Until their endless churn at linebacker in the secondary leads them to perpetual seven win seasons. So I'm still thinking about the the trade offs because it's just interesting to me. Everyone else really, come on, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so can this just happen all year round? So the teams just trading off for the draft, or is there like almost a transfer set window where you can make trades, where you can trade positions? So not actually the trades themselves, but where you, you can trade the positions. Because yeah, I just wonder if this kind of thing just happens all year round yeah. and it just doesn't stop. So, I think so, there's so. No, no transaction actually takes place. So my guess would be it can happen all year yeah, round. Yeah, it can happen all year um, round and you just then, never... If you Say you've traded and you've ended up with like the number one pick. Can you then trade that again to someone else? Yeah. Um, like it's, it's crazy, isn't it? What's the worst trade ever? I'd be really impressed if ever, if anyone actually knows this. But yeah, yeah that's what is the worst yeah. trade ever? Let's see who's out there. <laughs> Atlanta Falcons select Bijan Robinson, running back, Texas. Really, Atlanta? A fucking running back? <laughs> Did you not see Tyler Algier emerge as a thousand-yard rusher last year? I know Bijan is a shitload of talent, but you had Christian Gonzalez right there. He could have been a shutdown tandem with AJ Terrell for a decade. Yes, the Falcons need a pass-catching running back, but you can get that shit in round three. Dude, I'm not even a Falcons fan and I'm pissed at them. You better hope that Bijan is just as much the elite bell cow as people say he is. And it has to be out the gates. Drafting a runner this high nowadays isn't the hip, trendy thing to do. The Philadelphia Eagles select Jalen Carter. Ah, oh, they got defense, defense didn't they? Georgia. Yeah. This is a day of celebration for Philly. As expected, Jalen Hurts got his first big boy contract. And the Eagles are definitely bleeding government green in honor of the baggy secure. They've Speaking taken of like all of Georgia. The classic red flag draft defense. Oh, okay. Blessed with incredible talent except in between the eyes. Carter was supposed to be a top four selection, but then it came out he has an affinity for street racing. It got a teammate of his tragically killed. After that, he seemingly oh, wow. stopped giving a shit about football and had a disastrous showing at his pro day. Which is why the Eagles snagged him up in a perfect fit. In theory. If they give him the come to Jesus talk and Jalen gets his shit together, he and Jordan Davis destroy interior lines for a decade. The downside? Well, let me introduce you to a man named Lawrence Phillips. The Chicago Bears select Darnell Wright, offensive tackle, Tennessee. The Bears need linemen. Protecting Justin Fields in the pocket is paramount. And Darnell Wright immediately fills a need at either side of the line. Depends where they feel Tevin Jenkins fits better. It's another pick in a lineup trying to overhaul a stagnant franchise. 
And it seems to be working at least on paper. I will never complain about trying to build from the trenches. Protect the stars as best you can. It's not a sexy pick, but it's necessary. The Tennessee Titans select Peter Skaronski. Offensive tackle, Northwestern. Oh, god damn it. I was hoping to laugh at the Titans for drafting Will Levis in the first round. To be fair, they did cut Taylor Lewan, and Andre Dillard's going to be injured by week four. Skaronski is either going to be a quality tackle for years or an all-pro guard. Just as long as every scout that snickers about his so-called alligator arm stays quiet, he should be all right. The Titans themselves? They were trying to trade up to number three and get new Copkins, but it fell through. Their new stadium proposal, however, didn't. And they will look forward to a few Super Bowls on the city's dime in the future. Probably not involving them. Yeah, really nice. Speaking of Will Levis, he got picked by the Titans in the second round. Because why settle for just one extremely raw Project QB when you can have two of them? <laughs> the Detroit Lions select Jameer Gibbs, Please. running back, Alabama. Detroit, are you okay? A running back at 12? And one that wasn't projected to go anywhere near this position? You could have had Gibbs at 18. You just signed David Montgomery to be your feature back. You had a DeAndre Swift you barely used when he was somehow healthy before you traded him to Philly. <laughs> Lions, you better know what the hell you're doing, because the optics here look kinda shitty. Also, if you wanted to go with a runner, then why the hell did you trade down? Why not pick Bijan if this was the path you wanted to go? The only way to justify this pick is if Tamir becomes a stud before his first snap. The Green Bay. I think they got better, because I've seen a few comments from Lions. I don't actually know if they're Lions supporters or just okay. people on the draft saying they actually had a good draft. Oh, so okay. I'm guessing that maybe while they started with that, it got better for them as the draft went on. Because oh, apparently they've come out of it with a good, solid draft. Yeah, apparently comments are saying they're looking alright for the upcoming season. Yeah, so. yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm people expecting people. a lot. Bay Packers select Lucas Finesse, defensive end, Iowa. Never change, Green Bay. Dyer needs at wide receiver for roughly the fifth year in a row, yet you go for an edge rusher and a draft chalk full of phone? good ones yeah. for a few years down the road. Rashawn Gary's contract will be an issue when Preston Smith is aging, yes, but shit like this is why Wisconsin is frustrated to all hell with this regime. Ignoring the team's obvious issues for the sake of supposed long-term planning and endless trading down in the second round. And worse, picking a player who's dating the sister of Cole Komet. If Aaron Rodgers were still a Packer, he'd be ripping people's heads off in the war room. Thank God they finally got that trade done so we don't have to hear about it anymore. The Pittsburgh Steelers <laughs> select Broderick Jones. Offensive of tackle, Georgia. Thank fucking God I don't have to witness Dan Moore be absolutely overmatched at blindside for the third year in a row. The Steelers knew it as well. You invested heavily in your skill players. Go invest in your line and make it one of the best in football again. It didn't cost much to move up a few positions, and it allowed them to draft an absolute fucking mower. Pure chiseled <laughs> stone that can set the position for a decade if he succeeds. Love the pick. And don't worry, Yenzers, Joey Porter Jr. fell to number 32. The bloodlines remain strong. Pittsburgh has so many family connections on the team, they're almost incestuous. The New York <laughs> yes! E yes! 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 Select Will McDonald! Let's go! Yeah! A hidden cost of wow. the Aaron Rodgers trade. Swapping first rounders with Green Bay cost them a chance at drafting a needed offensive tackle in Broderick Jones. It was a month in the making, but Rodgers now gets a different shade of green, like the guy who replaced in Green Bay. Well, that guy found a fountain of youth. rusher in this class in Will <laughs> McDonald that is needed to keep up with the Joneses of the division. If it weren't for the fact that the Patriots robbed you of your true need, may a song fill your hearts with joy as compensation. Will McDonald is a Jet. J E T S Jets. <laughs> the Washington Commanders select Emmanuel Forbes, defensive back, Mississippi State. It's a fair pick. Washington had a tire need at corner, and Forbes is a scheme fit, even if it is a slight reach. The only downside is in his weight. Most NFL players could probably chuck this man like a javelin, weighing in at 166 pounds. Wow. In the old days, this would have been a demerit, but it's. Wow. Yeah. 100 and that's um, trying to work out in stone. No one even does it in stone anymore. It's going to confuse anyone under the age of 40. <laughs> <laughs> it's about 12 stone. Seems it's about 12 stone. Yeah, yeah it's 12 stone one. Wow. Oh, no, you can't let somebody on the pitch at 
pitch field. On the field. Uh, <laughs> right, Lakers. <laughs> 12 stone one. Wow. Yeah. He's going to be light third. Oh, that's just that's just awful. <laughs> He's got to gain some weight. Yeah, I'm, sure, gain, I'm sure they will. I'm yeah, sure they'll get him prepared. Get on the obviously, yeah, hundred percent. One thing with this, seeing there's been a couple of players who have been drafted who look, I wouldn't say devastated, but no reaction whatsoever. Whereas there have been others who have been like delighted. Yeah, it must be kind of weird that I don't know. That's a hypothetical scenario. You've grown up your entire life. You've wanted to play for the Steelers. Yeah, and the draft comes around, and you get drafted by uh, any other team, the Seahawks. Yeah, and you, but you really want to play for the Steelers. Mm. It's obviously the contracts are quite long, it seems, and the end of the average NFL career is quite short. I think anyway. Yeah, like, you may never get your chance. No, to... you might not. But I think, um, I mean, like the comments have been saying, it's so such a small percentage of college players will even get to the NFL so I think just getting there is enough for most yeah, people yeah yeah no I get that yeah obviously yeah, you want to be you're going to be happy aren't yeah you, you want to be set drafted family up for life yeah um, you don't want to be you don't want to be undrafted no. I'd love it I'd love it if um, our sport over here started off like this for a season yeah, Imagine how yeah, great it would be it. every team in the mix and yeah. some stronger than others but yeah we can normally tell you who's going to win the Premier League these days yeah as long as he can cover like a blanket on a toddler it shouldn't matter much let us hope he stays healthy and prospers. Unlike Chase Young. Can we sacrifice our limbs to make sure he can stay on the field? The New England Patriots select Christian Gonzalez, defensive back, Oregon. He wasn't projected to go super high, but it felt like this slide continued on for ages. Of course, he goes to New England, where Bill Belichick will somehow mold him into an elite corner like his team has for nearly every player they've had at that position. I'd say it was a good draft for them. You get a great player at a position of dire need and you deny the Jets of a severe need at offensive line. The Patriots have now beaten that team three times this year. The Detroit Lions select Jack Campbell, linebacker, Iowa. This pick makes a little more sense for Detroit. Best middle linebacker available in a weak draft for them. Detroit hasn't had a really good one as a field general for a while and it's not for lack of trying. Campbell's a slight reach, but in terms of a traditional linebacker, there isn't much to nitpick. It eases the sting of whatever the fuck their pick at 12 was. Although if you swap him in the Brian Branch pick, it seems okay. Plus you got Hendon Hooker in the third round that works as a backup fish. Now as I say this, they'll probably have the best draft of anyone because this is how this works. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Kalijah Canty, defensive end, Pittsburgh. Hail to Pitt. After shedding Donovan Smith, I figured they'd go tackle to replace him, but Canty fills a critical role as well. Him and Vita Vey on the defensive interior? Better bulk up in your offensive lines if you're in the NFC South. It's not what it was in the Super Bowl year, but that defense can still destroy hopes and dreams. As long as you manage to keep Devin White. And he plays up to potential, of course. The Seattle Seahawks select Jackson and Jigba, wide receiver, Ohio State. What you're now hearing is all of Wisconsin getting triggered over these boys taking the guy they were all begging their team to take. Weapons for Geno Smith. A priority for Seattle. Pairing Smith and Jigbo with DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett for a few seasons. And drafting another running back in the first two rounds. Somewhere Pete Carroll is salivating so much it's turning into a solid object he will use as chewing gum. JSN immediately slots in as a day one impact player. <laughs> and if he succeeds, it'll be yet another victory against the Packers over the past decade. Best kind of wins are the long range ones. The Los Angeles Chargers select Quinton Johnston. Wide receiver, TCU. Johnston may feel like excess goods, but past the surface, it makes a lot of sense. Keenan Allen's See, getting He does not look team. happy. Mike Williams no. can't do it alone. Justin Herbert needs receivers that can keep up with this rocket arm. This is where Quentin Johnston fits in. A big time wide out with the upside of one at the next level. Only if he could do something about some of the glaring holes throughout the roster, but the Chargers do Ooh, love them some sexy nice. picks. Don't say they don't try to impress. The Baltimore Ravens select Zay Flowers. Yes. Wide receiver, Boston College. Oh. Baltimore and wide receiver is about as critical a need as a man in water after three days in the desert. Zay Flowers is the perfect fit for what Baltimore runs. And hopefully he'll fulfill his potential, unlike the last few firsts they've invested in the position. It's good that we're focusing on this problem instead of others. Big news occurred just before the draft. The great Lamar debate has finally been settled. 
They both stopped their oh, brief right. separation and, and renewed contracts. their vows. Yeah. Lamar stepped off the ledge of his exorbitant demands, but he got paid. Becoming the highest paid QB in yearly value with $185 million guaranteed. It's fair value wow. for what Lamar brings to the table. Crazy. As much as I would have loved to see Lamar in a different division, it would have been weird without him as a Raven. Saved at the 11th hour. The Minnesota Vikings select Jordan Addison, wide receiver, USC. Run on wide receivers continues with Minnesota's answer to Adam Thielen. Addison fills a lot of the requirements that Thielen had as a Viking for many years. Slightly undersized, cerebral, good route running, and reliable hands. He made magic happen at Pitt in USC. And if he utilizes those talents as a Viking, he'll make a great one-two punch with Justin Jefferson for a while. Yeah, he does look light as well, doesn't he? Now going to throw to them after this season. But that's for another time. The New York Giants select Deontay Banks, defensive back, Maryland. There were no more wide receivers worth a first rounder available after all of them were just snagged. So why not go for need and the best fit available for your scheme? Corner was a big hole to fill for the G-Man. And Deontay Banks is pretty good for what New York runs. It's all but foolproof. Defense is what has helped guide New York back to relevance. Filling it with more talent definitely doesn't hurt. If Banks is good, it will help in this endeavor. The Buffalo Bills select Dalton Kincaid. Tight end, Utah. Buffalo didn't need much, but they did need an alternative to Dawson Knox in the passing game. More weapons for Josh Allen couldn't hurt. Plus, Kincaid is one of the best available at tight end. Just imagine the upside of Kincaid terrorizing defenses for a very, very long time. Look no further than Travis Kelsey. Yes. Do you know how often he's destroyed the hopes and dreams of Buffalonians? If Kincaid can come even close to that impact, it'll be a success. The Dallas Cowboys select Mozzie Smith, defensive tackle, Michigan. Dallas didn't make a flashy pick. This is kind of surprising. Mozzie Smith makes a ton of sense as it fills a dire need on the roster. Interior D-line wow. is lacking for the Cowboys. And Mas you ever done that with Jim? No. No. Definitely not. He looks like a big boy and he looks like... <laughs> A lot of people are going to be on the. It's one of those people that you imagine if he's doing leg seconds. press, he's got like people sitting on top of the yeah. machines. They run out of weights, can't Just fit jump. anywhere else. Get your mates on. That's your it. mates involved. Yeah, monster of a man. Definitely. Ozzy was the best available at the time. Nothing wrong with drafting another running back to replace Zeke, but you can get that later. Get what you need to get and go from there. Simple as that. The Jacksonville Jaguars select Anton Harrison, tackle. Oklahoma. Jacksonville's replacement for Jawan Taylor on the O-line. Harrison can play it, so welcome to the resurgent Duval. Your job will be protecting the Golden Goose in Trevor Lawrence. Think you can handle it? If not, there are plenty of other candidates for the job. Maybe some of the lottery tickets they had in the later rounds. Best of luck, Anton. The Cincinnati Bengals select Miles Murphy, defensive end, Clemson. This reeked of a Michael Mayer selection, but since he could use a counterpiece to Trey Hendrickson on the edge. Especially in the unforgiving AFC North, having a guy like this in your arsenal is paramount. Miles should have day one impact, barring catastrophic injury. And every piece counts in the quest to finally lift Lombardi for the first time. You'll do anything to get it. The upside is there, but can he be consistent enough to realize it? The New Orleans Saints select Brian Brzee, defensive tackle, Clemson. New Orleans shed a ton on the defensive line this offseason. On Yamada, Tuttle, and Davenport in particular, so it was critical that they refill it with cost control talent. Brzee is the best available D lineman in this spot. Congratulations, you've earned a trip down to the bayou. Their brand new Derek Carr, will it be enough to finally allow the Saints to reach the peaks that they once experienced? That's to be determined, but the selections they made won't hurt in their quest. It is a really weak NFC South this year, just saying. The Philadelphia Eagles select Nolan Smith, wow. linebacker, Georgia. Nothing like the prototypical <laughs> Eagles pick. Not Blazing Georgia. speed, yeah. lightning agility, and weighs 240 pounds soaking wet. Goes to show you how much the league has changed in a decade. Nolan Smith is a new breed of edge rusher. And Philly's apparently taking the midnight train down to Georgia. The Eagles are assembling the front seven of the Bulldogs' natty team. Jordan Davis, Jalen Carter, Nolan Smith, and N'Kobe Dean. They even got Keely Ringo in the fourth round. Watch them somehow end up with Trayvon Walker and Devontae Wyatt after all is done. With the 31st pick of the 2023 NFL Draft, the Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs select Felix and Uzama. Defensive end, 
Kansas State. Oh. We interrupt this rambling for yet another victory lap of the Super Bowl <laughs> champs. Chiefs meet your replacement for the disappointing Frank Clark. And at a much cheaper cap hit as well. To defend your title, it's simply plug and play with the next man up. That's what FAU is going to be at Kansas City from this point forward. Nothing else to say about the first round of the draft. So prolonged that they showed Will Levis in the green room about 500 times that night. Besides him, an exciting time for us all. And the only thing you can do is speculate until the games are played. Debating great all you want, but it's going to be a bit before you can assess these picks properly. It's how it's always been and always will be. The get Atlanta Potter? Falcons select DeMarco Hellums. No. Defensive back, Alabama. 28-3, good one. We've heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, I'm assuming that came from the New England section down in the orchestra pit. Yeah, interesting. Um, <clears throat> obviously, we're not going to know many of their names, um, but it's not... No, I've got them all listed. Have you? You've got them all memorised? Yeah, Anthony Richardson <laughs> was in fourth and Bryce Young was in first. I know first. Bryce Young first, obviously. Um, Panthers. Second so was him. the other guy. Yeah. <laughs> the other quarterback. But yeah. It's nice to know. No, it is. It's nice. Yeah, it's nice We're to know. We're going into the new season, yeah. our first full season. Yeah. Knowing who the rookies are. And then we yeah. can sort of assess how they get on. Yeah, well, the season, rookie, yeah, nice. rookie, the main rookie first round picks. There'll be plenty more, obviously, yeah, that yeah, came yeah. in after yeah. that. But yeah, you're right. It's our first experience of it. It's going to be our first watch and... Yeah, it'd be like I say, it'd be interesting to see how these do get on. Yeah, I'm gonna have to come back and see how he gets on with these predictions that he, the the commentary added here on who's yeah, gonna do yeah, well, who's yeah. not. Um, it's like he said, you have to wait, I suppose, and I see, come to those yeah. decisions afterwards. But yeah, no, it sounds like a lot of teams are happy with their draft. I suppose easy question: who had the worst draft? Because I'm negative like that. <laughs> <laughs> who had the worst draft? This going ahead to the new season. Yeah. I'll ask who had the best, but there's probably going to be so many opinions on that. I know in our Discord alone, there's been a lot of shout outs for the Eagles having yeah. the best draft. Uh, the Bears are happy. The Seahawks are happy. It's because about yeah. 50% of our Discord is Seattle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you true. need to get on there to help us level it out a little yeah. bit. They're great. Yeah. Love them. But um, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, get everyone on there, level it out a little bit, it'd be I great. See. But yeah, so there's been a lot of opinions on who's the best. But yeah, I'll be really interested to know who's had the worst, just because, yeah, just yeah. yeah, it's something a bit different. But yeah, we hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching with us. Uh, we really enjoyed that, really informative. It's going to help us a lot going into the new 100%. season, I think. Um, let us know if you didn't know before the video what you think about our suggestions down in the comments. And please do like, subscribe, and share. It really helps subscribe to the channel. We'll see you on the next one.